Ladies and gentlemen, would everyone please stand for the pledge? At this time, I'd like to introduce Robert Collins. Bob is a veteran who served the United States Army in Korea from 1971 to 72 as a specialist fourth class. Throughout his service, he has received several accommodation. Upon discharge, he has worked for the state of Pennsylvania. Robert, thank you for your service. The floor is yours. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ladies and gentlemen, everyone please stand for a moment of silence. Um, you know, we, we have, we always, I wish we didn't have to have a moment of silence every meeting, but we have so many good people that are in the service or law enforcement that die every day across our country. And this, Major Brent Taylor, mayor of Ogden, Utah, was killed in Afghanistan. He was teaching commandos, training commandos there. He took a year off from being mayor. His community gave him his leave of absence so he could go over there. He's a real patriot. And he was killed under small arms fire in a shootout. But um, please keep him and his family and his community in our thoughts and prayers. Real good man. Sergeant Ronald Lead Hellas of Ventura County Sheriff's Office, California. Thousand Oaks shooting, November 8, 2018. He was killed after entering the bar and confronting a shooter. Also who died at that time but were killed were Cody Kaufman, Justin Meeks, Sean Adler, Blake Digman, Noel Sparks, Daniel Moraki, Jake Dunham, Elena Housie, Tomasi Alfonso, Christina Morset, Christine, Christina Morset, and Mark Meza. Please keep these families and these individuals who lost their lives in our thoughts and prayers. This shouldn't be going on. Also, we have a Chicago police officer, Samuel Jimenez. Officer Jimenez was on the force less than two years and he was gunned down as he went to the aid of officers who had been called to a Mercy, the Mercy Hospital Medical Center at 3.20 a.m. when he confronted the suspect and began a shootout. Please keep him in our thoughts and prayers and all of our servicemen, our law enforcement, and all of our citizens to die senselessly in these, shootout, these shootings that should never, ever, ever happen and their family should never have to go through this type of grief. Please, let's have a moment of silence. Thank you. Robert, thank you for coming in. I'd like to bring this Wednesday, November 21st, 2018, Board of Commissioners meeting to order in the Commissioner's Conference Room at 10.05 a.m. I'd like to make a motion for the reading of the minutes. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Commissioner yes. Commissioner yes. Commissioner Yes. Yes. Okay, at this time I'd like to ask Fran Pantuso to unveil our poster for this year's. We got, it's like you like Vanna White today. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'd like to have Mike Melcher. I don't know if Maureen McGuigan's here, but Mark, Maureen, Maureen, Mike. Go up to the podium. Um, let's talk. Let's talk about the. Uh, let's talk about the winter markets marketplace yeah. at the Globe. We think it's going to be a great uh, weekend. That's kind of reminiscent of that old-fashioned uh, holiday time. Mm -hmm. We're so digitally connected and busy and stressed that we really want to make this event a very cozy place for families, for people of all ages. Um, I want to start off, though, because I think a lot of people might be a little confused. Um, this is modeled after those European uh, Chris Kindle Marts and Winter Markets. It, we are outside, but we are in this huge uh, industrial-style tent. So you will be warm. It has heating, lights. You'll be very cozy. That, that's the word I'm using for this. Um, there'll be 60 vendors in there, and Kappa was nice enough to extend it because they're right across the street. Um, 
as an annex. So there'll be about 20, 25 more vendors right next to us. And I'll have Mike talk a little bit about that. Um, the other thing is it's three days, kicks off Friday with the lighting of the globe. We'll have a horse and carriage ride. I know Commissioner Cummings likes that. Uh, <laughs> we'll have music by the Scranton Rhythm Knights and Valley View um, Choir, and then we'll have music in the tent. Uh, what I'm really excited about too is in the building next to the globe, because we're still under construction, we couldn't quite get in there. We'll have a children's area. So there's Santa. That was always used as part of the Globe. The globe. Right, exactly. So, Santa so we'll have an will exhibit. Be able to do pictures for Santa and the Globe. Yeah, there'll be an exhibit about the history. There'll be uh, games for kids. There'll be a, a record player. We have a little lounge set up that'll be like an old fashioned living room. Maybe get some Christmas room. pictures. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah, there'll be so. Um, and that's, uh, we'll have a fire bowl for s'mores making and nice. backyard days. So, I'm, Michael, do you want to say anything then about your partnership? Well, as always, thank you very much for uh, for thinking of us and uh, bringing us in as a partner. Uh, we're always thrilled. You're to the Ritz Theater. We can't absolutely. Yeah. There you are. Oh, yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yes, I know. Uh, we're ne uh, wonderful neighbors. To uh, um, very much looking forward to you guys moving in full time. Um, we uh, we're we're going to be serving as an overflow location. Uh, any vendors that are interested should follow the same protocol and steps that they would follow to register. Um, everything is still continuing to flow through the county. Uh, in addition to being overflow, um, the cafe will be open for folks if they'd like to come and grab a cup of coffee or anything like that. We will have uh, additional restrooms available um, if they're needed. And uh, we also have uh, children's programming that's going to be available all day long. Um, we'll be showing movies, arts and crafts. Uh, so if you'd like to make this a family affair but sneak in a little bit of time um, to get some shopping done or maybe buy some things for the kids that you don't need them tagging along with you for, uh, we'd be happy to, uh, to take care of them with Kappa. We'll have our staff there uh, and be all ready to receive folks all through the weekend. Um, really, uh, and again, I'm just honored that you thought of us and really glad to be a part of it. A great partner. I just want to mention a couple of our other partners because some are sitting in this room. I really have to thank the library because as part of our children's area, we're going to have special books about winter holidays that people can read. Also, um, the Lackawanna Visitors Bureau is our major partner, so we couldn't do this without them. As well as Anthracite Events is our vendor coordinator, and Scranton Tomorrow is helping with some of the displays. So I think it's really important to recognize that we don't do this alone, along with Kappa. And we just want the public to come out. We think it's going to be a great, it's um, rain or snow because you'll be protected, and I uh, think it'll be great. So wishing everyone a happy Thanksgiving, and we'll see you soon. Stay right there, Mike. Commissioner Cummings? Yeah, um, in regards to the children for, for CAPA, you're basically going to be watching the children if their parents wish to go and shop, correct? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, we have our, our certified staff. Um, we'll be there, again, arts and crafts. Um, we'll, be, uh, we'll have um, lots of snack times, movies, um, lots and lots of different activities for, to keep them busy. Um, it can be stressful, um, and that's absolutely the antithesis of what we'd like this day to be. Like Maureen was saying, it should be fun, it should be family friendly, um, and uh, you know, feel free to bring the siblings, feel free to bring the cousins, and we'll take good care of them and, uh, and make sure that, that parents can relax and enjoy their day as much as the kids. Is there a fee for that? Uh, there is. It's an hourly. Um, it base, it's based on the number. I believe it's $5. Um, to uh, to cover the snacks and the crafts and all of that, but uh, we uh, again try to to make it as convenient and as reasonable as possible. They can go right to our website, which is kappa.org, c-a-p-a-a.org, uh, and pre-register, which we always appreciate. And uh, there's lots and lots of information about that uh, that very special weekend uh, right on our website. And you were just uh, uh, blessed with some uh, donations that we spoke <laughs> of. We had a crazy, crazy weekend a few weeks ago. Yeah. Yes, uh, a very large donation from a very unexpected source um, came to the table uh, and has uh, ensured that our entire accessibility project with uh, finishing the wheelchair accessibility on the first floor and then making the second floor theater wheelchair accessible will actually be completed. Um, the funding is all there. Uh, we are working uh, hand in hand with the county through uh, Keith Williams. Uh, and your committee um, for accessibility and also um, through the Center for Independent Living to make sure we do it right. Um, we're, we're bringing in you know, all of the community partners. We're meeting next Monday and we're hoping to kick off the new year with, uh, with a fully accessible second floor um, for the Ritz Theater. That's it's just ex it's exceptionally exciting um, time at the, at the Ritz.
Listen, I'm so proud of you both uh, for, for you and um, your wife have, have done an excellent job. And um, when you first came in, you know, you were a little... Um, you were a little uh, worried about what was going to happen. When, uh, yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to say that and put words in your mouth, but nervous. I know you were nervous. And uh, you are one of the first. You're the first business uh, model that's here in Scranton from many, many years ago. Correct? Is, is that? Am I correct in that? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, you're doing it all through arts and, and culture, and it can be done. You're proving it can be done, and you're making it happen. And I'm so proud of the work that you're all doing. So thank you so much. And is so happy to have you involved with the marketplace and uh, with our departments and with all the departments and what that um, Maureen had mentioned um, that are going to be helping. Thank you all so very much for helping us with this endeavor, uh, bringing some of our memories back from the past and um, making uh, Scranton great again. How about that? <laughs> I wish, I mean, I wish, you know, I, I appreciate all of that, but without Maureen, um, without the help of, of you all, never would have happened so your dedication to the arts and to the development of downtown is 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 very forward-thinking and very inspirational to the folks that want to bring business to Scranton and Michael's yeah. also one of our arts engaged grantees and we work with <coughs> Bill Browning and human services he's really changing lives in that sector as well I just want to say real quick if you if you check out our Facebook page it's Lackawanna winter market we just put up the music schedule which I think is pretty interesting we have the Philharmonic uh, we have Nativity Miguel Choir along with jazz trios and we think it'll be great. So if you want to like it, we post things every day so you'll get more information. We're also on Instagram. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. very much. <laughs> nice Thank job. You. Nice job. Thank you. Stay up there, Maureen. Oh, oh. Maureen. Commissioner, you can stay up there, Michael. Oh, Michael, stay up there. Commissioner Terry, Terry Annie. She <laughs> kissed the Marnie's down. <laughs> 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 it's a great way to kick off the holidays yes. and the, uh, the child care. Um, Portion of it is a, a phenomenal idea. It's a great touch. I think it's microphone. Like for everyone. And uh, I just want to thank you for all your hard work. And Maureen, as usual, great job. Yes, good okay. job. Thank you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Um, this um, from when we moved into this building or start. We bought this building April April of 2016. The whole idea was for this building to have memories of the past and also be part of the future and even though we were not moving in there yet until we get to December we've made sure that this building was brought back now we've had these marketplaces we've had them over in the actual in the the, the grassy area on Washington Avenue we've had them in the mall but since we've been in ownership of the globe we've had it there two times and we're having it on the street and using part of the built the old building for the marketplace you know this is bringing back memories there's a lot of naysayers out there saying it wasn't going to work wasn't going to happen thousands and thousands and thousands of people come out f for first friday and then you throw in the globe in the marketplace when i spoke to mayor bill courtright last year he said he never saw more cars in downtown scranton in that three-day space than he did in his whole entire life that's what he said I mean, this is a great economic impact. Besides the fact that the Globe did not cost the taxpayers a penny that's paid for with leases and rents, because all we had from the past was leases and rent, rent receipts. That's all we had. Now we have a building that's owned by the citizens, paid for by the citizens. And this is like a great kickoff. Think about it. It's December 7th. We're going to start off at 5 o'clock. We're going to start off, we're going to have the voice of the valley singing it's one of the course groups and then scranton night rhythms we're gonna have a sing-along unico la festa is going to be putting on cocoa and cookies it's going to be great and then at 5 5 15 5 20 we're going to flip the lights on and we're going to light the globe store up and then we're going to open up the marketplace you know and the marketplace is going to be open on saturday december 8th 11 to 7 p.m and on sunday the 9th 11 to 5 p.m this is great for family members we have our beautiful poster over here these posters are going to be throughout lackawanna county to remind everyone of christmas past and last year and the great fun that they had down at the Globe Store and how we're containing this inside of a tent right on Wyoming Avenue and use a part of the Globe for pictures with Santa Claus and also partnering with Michael Melcher from Kappa at the historical Ritz for a spillover space so we have more places for vendors so we're gonna have close to we could have close to a hundred vendors complete at the end of all this mm -hmm. so we didn't miss a step all we did was go outside and we're keeping 
the memories, keeping the holidays, and just keeping the love that's in Lackawanna County alive in downtown Scranton. And what, just what a great economic impact and everything that goes with it. From courts and carriage rides, great food, there's music. You I mean, there's a little bit of everything over those three days. There's free tote bags for the thir first oh, oh, 1,000 uh, customers. And on Saturday, Saturday be there Saturday. Provisions. <laughs> Last year, there was a line that went around the block that was three, four wide. Go I'm sure they won't be stuffed, but they're very nice bags. So when you buy your things, you can, yeah. You got somewhere to put everything. But I would just like to thank all of our partners and um, thank my fellow commissioner for voting to actually to make this happen. Because we, if we didn't have the Globe Store, we wouldn't be in this situation. And we wouldn't be able to create this great economic impact to downtown Scranton. And to bring the families and the love and the memories together once again. And hopefully we will be doing it in 2019. So I'd just like to thank both of you. And it's going to be a great December 7th when we light up the Globe Store again. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank Happy, you, Thanksgiving Happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving. Martin. Happy Thanksgiving, thank Mike. Okay, at this time we're going to go into proclamation presentation 18-0239. Commissioner Cummings. Small business spotlight, uh, Paradise Sweets and Soulful Eats Cafe. Asia Wallace. Yes, how you doing? Hi, how are you? Thank I'm you all so right. Thanks for coming in. Tell I us appreciate, a little bit about your business. I appreciate y'all having me, okay? Absolutely. Um, I have a little like bakery soul food place in the Steamtown Marketplace. That right at, you know, the old Steamtown Mall, but now it's the marketplace at Steamtown. Yeah. And we have uh, something where the old food court used to be. It's called the Scranton Public Market. Okay. We have multiple vendors there. We're there on the weekends, Friday to Sunday. They're normally there 11 to 4. I'm near 1 p.m. to 5. Okay. Um, I'm near on Thursdays also, though. But um, what I do is like little southern desserts. I do peach cobbler, blueberry cobbler, apple pie cobbler. I also do cupcakes occasionally and pound cakes. It's all calorie free, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, you can wish it to be, but <laughs> no, it, I, I love butter, baby. I'm like uh, Paula Dean when it comes to the butter. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. And brown sugar. More butter. butter more butter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like real butter. butter. Yeah, I like real butter. <laughs> okay. Stuff, yeah. you, won't, you won't never find fondant. I, I use real butter, real sugar. I try to use non-GMO products whenever I see them available. I use non-GMO flour, non-GMO sugar. Oh, good. Um, I do everything from scratch. Uh, I also, I'm trying to add soul food soon, like the collard greens, mac and cheese, and um, candy yams, fried chicken, but. Um, hopefully that'll be coming soon. Uh, this weekend we're having a big event. It's called Shop Small at Seamtown. It is. It will saw be, the mayor announcing it. Oh, you said okay. Well, it'll be Friday to Sunday, um, and it'll be over fifty over fifty vendors there. That'll be a lot. But um, we have some very nice vendors that are permanent vendors that are there every week. We have Household Six. Um, they do like salsas and um, um, pickles and mustard. She is oh, she's awesome. Uh, we have 1998 Candle, a candle company. We have Fondipity. They have very good um, like mac and cheese and stuff like that. Then we have uh, Paper Fuchsia. She makes earrings and stuff. And we also have uh, um, what's it called? Sugarloaf Herb, Herb Farm. She makes like soaps and body oil so we, we just have a lot of people was building up um and we are trying to get people to see that we're there on the weekends and we are there um like i said friday to sunday uh, when i'm there on thursday so that's that's interesting and what made you decide to do this business oh wow uh, well i've been cooking since i was like 11. I love to cook and bake. Um, when I was little, my dad brought me this fake little Fisher Price oven. Yeah. Had a picture of a pie on the front, and I was like, I want to make that. Like I want to <laughs> make something that look like how that tastes. So <laughs> that's how I started with the wanting to cook. And my grandmother, my great grandma, had 14 kids, and all she did was wow. cook, and, and she sold dinners and stuff. So it was already in my blood. But um, I just, I, I like it. I like people faces when they like something I make, and it's like. You could do a lot of businesses, but people got to eat every day, okay? That's right. And I, I, so I, I like feeding people. Uh, and that's what I like to do. And but, you chose uh, Scranton, though. Huh? You chose, You moved here 11 years ago? You yeah, 11 us. years ago. I lived in um, Old Forge. I lived in Scranton first, then Old Forge, now I'm in Taylor. Okay. But, um, yeah, I've been here 11 years. I like it. It's peaceful out here. Uh, I, I ain't got no drama. I, I like it out here in Scranton. 
I do. It's, it's pretty. It's a nice little area. I like it. Well, so, we love um, having you here, so thank you. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. I um, hope to bring y'all some food soon. Hoping maybe at the this weekend event I can have some type of food. I might do my turkey gobbler burgers where, like, I slice some smoked turkey, and I make some homemade gravy, some homemade stuffing, and, and, um, and a little bit of cranberry sauce and uh, on a little toasted bun. So hopefully I'll have those sandwiches for y'all. Nice. I'm hoping. I'm hoping we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Definitely we'll have hungry. cobbler, though. Cobbler and pound cakes will be there, but I'm, I'm hoping to do the sandwiches, too. So. Cobbler. <laughs> yeah. That's a great story. Thank you so much for coming in and sharing it with Thank us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I appreciate y'all. Yeah. Hope to see y'all soon. Y'all come on down to the Scranton Public Market. Uh, we'll do. Hope Thank to you. see you. Landing on it. All right. Uh, Commissioner Terry Annie? It's uh, wonderful to have someone move back to into the area and, and, and start you. a business like this. It's just a, a wonderful, wonderful thing. And there, there certainly is a need for some of these here. There's many bakeries, but none quite the, like, like this one. Oh, thank you. I'm trying. And uh, the soul food is, is something that there have been places that have opened in the past and haven't survived, but I have a feeling yours is certainly going to survive and thrive. Thank you. Uh -huh. I appreciate that. And, uh, it, I appreciate it, it, it that very sounds, much. Sounds very interesting, and I'm looking forward to getting down there and eating something. Right. Yes, please come on down. Yep. I love to feed you, okay? <laughs> Y'all come on down. Appreciate it. Now, Asa has actually a great story. She's a big part of Lackawanna County. She actually, we were at her house. She was a first-time home buyer in Taylor. She's a nice house on Main Street, nice bushes, everything else. Well, we went there. She had chocolate-covered strawberries. Oh, they're my all favorite. They were cheesecake stuff cake. strawberries. Yeah. yeah. I didn't I remember. <laughs> this is a quite, this is a, just like four years, five years yeah. ago. Yeah, it but it was wonderful. Ago. George Kelly was like beyond, like beyond himself. He was thrilled. I bet. But, um, but no, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Like you know, I mean, th that, that's what the area's about. That's what that county government's about. Trying to help someone get their own home. You know, I mean, your house is your castle. You know, I mean, and you, you talked a little bit about then that you were doing stuff on the side with the bacon and everything else, and you know, I mean, working with your grandma and learning from her. You know what I mean? And yeah, I was sneaking in the kitchen when she's making carrot cake, and I would yeah. try to steal the icing. And when I seen, I was like, wait, I can make something that tastes like. I was just like, I gotta learn how to make this yeah, carrot cake. Yeah, it's the best, isn't it? That's what I do. But, yeah, I made the cheesecake stuffed strawberries, and they came, and, and I had such a nice time. And I, I became a realtor after I yeah, learned. Yeah, that. Yeah, once I learned, and once I purchased my house and learned about the home buying, I loved it. So I became a realtor, and I, I still work for Berkshire Hathaway. I do that part-time. But um, when I, I just had a baby, like, two years ago, and I've been reevaluating my whole life. And I'm like, what, what do I really want to really do? I want to do real estate You're a little busy, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> And you're I was a single mom? Like, yeah, no, no, I'm married. I'm married. Single mom in here? No, no, no. I, I was a single mom when I moved to Lackawanna yeah, County. Okay. I was a single mom for like four years when I first moved up here. But then I got married a few years ago. And, um, Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Yeah, marriage is something. It's something. It's, it's a great thing. It can yeah, be great. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> 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 but thank you. I'm, I'm just, you know, life is, is something. Yeah. But um, I, I keep, I'm a go-getter. So I'm going to do what I got to do and keep going. And I'm glad to be in Lackawanna County. It's a beautiful place. A beautiful place and um but the, like i said with real estate i do that part-time still but when i had the baby i was just reevaluating everything yeah, so busy, busy with a baby totally. yes yes but somebody told me if you do what you love it's not like work right. no, so like i work. love cooking and i said so i'm gonna try to start doing that more and hey now y'all see me and that was my premise for for this uh, small business spotlight if you do what you love people generate people like yourself yeah. and, and we, we're showing that we're spotlighting that in our county I, yeah I this is your passion you. yes and like I said like so. but like really you really are like the perfect story like you said he came as a single mom first time home buyer get remarried new baby yeah small business you know just investing in the community and we're really happy yeah. that you're here you. and i'm sure the the mall the market street market over at the mall is very happy for you to oh, be there we'll you. we'll make sure that we get over to have something thank you yes, thank you so weekend. much yeah i love being at the mall it's a it's a nice place and john the owner he's a very nice guy and management is very kind mm -hmm. so i'm great we're looking for more vendors we need more permanent vendors so if anybody is looking to do their like a little small homemade thing come to the mall come to the scranton public market now i know people. you do some of this on the side do you have, is there a phone number if somebody wants to reach out to you to yes i have a facebook phone page and my phone number is 570-241-2370 
and you can order full. I do all my little cobblers are mini and things like that. And my ch my sweet potato cheesecake pie, I do mini ones. I do pumpkin cheesecake pie on the ginger snap crust. Um, they're oh, all mini, <laughs> but I do full size. Yeah, ginger. Yeah, I do full size oh, ones, man. and um, I do banana pineapple cream pie, and I do like pound cakes, like socket to me pistachio pound cake. I'll have that this weekend. I, I have uh, like different pound cakes. Sometimes I do a rum. I do a rum raisin pound cake too. Like I do just different little. Mm -hmm. Little little southern trees yeah. and stuff, Great. and then it's uh, whatever pops in my head. Okay, I like Oreos too, so you might see an Oreo cupcake or something coming in. <laughs> but um, yeah, you can just they can call me on Facebook. You can message me Paradise Sweets and Soulful East Cafe. Um, I'm on Insta Instagram too. So and your times again? When are you there? On I am near Thursdays from one to four, okay. and I'm near Friday to Sunday one to five. And um, well, normally I'm near one to six actually, but. You could just just get, t message me, see if I'm still there, because sometimes I'm even there to eight. It's just I'm, I'm I may have an order to do, so I'll still so you're be doing there. Doing stuff baking. on site. Yeah, uh huh. And I have ice cream. I have ice cream too. I get from yeah. um, Blue Ribbon yeah. down in West Piston, and I carry Hershey's ice cream too. So you can get um, ice cream, a nice you know hard ice cream. Yeah. With your dessert. You can get it on top of your warm cobbler. I keep the cobblers warm. Oh. So you can get ice cream on top or you can get whipped cream. Nice. I'm doing hot chocolates yeah. now because it's yeah. cold. So I got hot chocolate. I got uh, cappuccino, different flavors, cappuccino and stuff like that. Wow. little ice cream on top. You can get it a la mode, yeah, uh, hot cocoa with a little ice cream on top if you want. Very nice. Congratulations. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure ha being here. I appreciate this. Commissioner Cummings has a certificate for you. Yeah, oh, and and you, you will be an inspiration for others to do as you did. So that's one another reason we have people thank like yourself you. in here. Thank you for all you're doing. If I can do it, I think anybody can do it, okay? <laughs> Definitely. Appreciate it. Today we give a certificate of recognition. The County of Lackawanna Board of Commissioners does hereby recognize Paradise Sweets and Soulful Eats Cafe in honor of achieving the designation of a small business spotlighted in Lackawanna County given this 21st day of November 2018 by Commissioner Patrick O'Malley, Commissioner Jerry Natariani, and myself, Commissioner Cummings. Thank Come you on so up. much. Come on up here. Thank you. Y'all give me a hug, oh, girl. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate oh, this. Congratulations. Oh, nice. Thank you. Nice seeing you. Good seeing you. I told you. It was funny because Ace was actually over at People's Bank a couple weeks ago. Marie said, I said, we're going to try to get you in. Uh, so I'm, I'm so happy you're here. More than you know. Okay. There we go. Sorry. Oh, my, my good face on the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, thank you so you much. I appreciate so this. Thank you. Oh, Congratulations. So thank you, thank you, thank you. See you later. Yes, y'all have a good day. I didn't fall on my way down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. She was great. Yes, absolutely. Great. <laughs> Don't ask Fran. She's gonna ask for a little bit every. <laughs> well, me, me and Fran will be. Up. Me and Fran are talking as you're talking. We'll be over there later. <laughs> okay, we have uh, two community updates. We have the Taylor Community Library here. I know Mary Garm is here, and she has Jeannie Sluck from the Taylor Community Library. Come on, let's talk about what's going on in the Taylor Library. I know they do great things down there. Great senior citizen population, lots of people coming down, great place. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jeannie Sluck, and I'm the director of the Taylor Community Library, where I've been for the last 38 years. And I'm delighted to We're see We're happy to have you. <laughs> so am I. And I'm um, delighted to see Asia, because she's one of our patrons. Yeah. And I'm delighted to see how well she's coming along, and that she's come a real long way. Yeah. We're very proud of her. And her food is to die for, trust mm -hmm. me. <laughs> and I was very excited when Commissioner O'Malley invited me to come and talk about the library, and I said, how long do I have? And I said, well, I'll try and get it in in that amount of time. So what I'm going to do today is just focus on some of the programs that we do do at our library. And I'd like to start with the juvenile programs for the children. And one of our most popular ones is our American Girl. And I don't know if you're in, uh, know what the American Girl is, but they highlight different girls throughout the centuries and they focus on her life. And what we do is every month we focus on a doll and not only do the girls learn about the story of the doll, but that time in history. And we also do a craft 
and a food and a project revolving around that time in history. So while they're having fun, they're also learning and they don't realize that they're doing it. But it's been very successful for us and we've been doing it for the last 10 years and it's nice. still going strong. We also have what we call Maker Monday, which focuses on STEAM and STEM, which of course is science, technology, engineering, architecture, and mathematics. And the kids come in and they're allowed to do different experiments, try different things. Not only do they learn about um, building things and learning how things work, but they also learn what it's like to be part of a team. And so they're learning cooperation along with the sciences. We also have a Read to the Dog program, which is one of my favorites. And children who are a little shy or hesitant or having some problems with reading are encouraged to come in and read to a dog because a dog doesn't judge you. We work closely with our school districts, and it's so nice. You see a child come in in September who holds back and is a little hesitant, and by June, they walk right up to that dog like it's their best friend and yeah. pick up their book and start reading. And it just really makes you feel good. Um, then we have our teens. And as everyone knows, teens are a hard group to get to. But we try our best. And we have something we call our Teen Reading Lounge, which again, we work closely with our school, where the children all read the same books. They come in. Not only do they discuss the books, but we also have them do projects. They've done song lists according to the books. They've done Facebook posts for them. They've done art projects. And we always highlight what they do so that they feel that they just don't do it and somebody forgets about it. We've, uh, this past summer, we did our Ghostly Tale by Firelight, where they uh, read stories which they thought were scary. And they discussed them, and we made some more, which was a lot of fun. And we also did, this past summer, a photography walk through the uh, borough of Taylor. And we had some really great photos taken at our Memorial Cemetery and our former breaker. But they just didn't take pictures. They came back. They learned how to use Photoshop. And again, we uh, printed them up and uh, display them. And I want to bring this up really quick. I'm sorry for, but the Taylor Cemetery, actually, the historical cemetery, mm -hmm. has one of George Washington's. Harley Hughes. From, yeah. Yes. Yes. From the Revolutionary mm -hmm. War is buried there, which is amazing. Yes. It's really, if you have a chance, take. It's right on Main Street. It's got an old wrought iron black fence around. It. It's got the old, the old-fashioned church in there. It's probably over 100 and some years old. They have their own historical society, but they also have a cemetery that's really, really neat. It is. Sorry for interrupting. No, no, that's fine. Um, finally, we have our adult programming, and we do a, a Monday movie matinee. But that's just not a movie. It's a movie that's based on something in history. We've done Unbroken. Most recently, we did Chappaquiddick. And people just don't come to see the movie. Again, we discuss it. Not only did you like it, but do you remember what happened during this time? And what can you add to it? What would you have added to the movie? Or what would you have taken away? So it's, it's a lively discussion. We have genealogy workshops, which are always popular. We do them twice a year. And they're usually for a six-week uh, period of time. And most recently, we've partnered with Fidelity Bank to do a program on identity theft, which is very, very uh, popular. And I mean, uh, people really, really were amazed at the information that they got from that. Sure. And not only am I the director of the Taylor Library, I also have the honor of being the coordinator of programs on a county level for all the libraries in Lackawanna County. And some of the things that we're doing right now, we are partnering with the Northeastern Pennsylvania Alzheimer's Association, and each library does something for people with dementia and early onset Alzheimer's along with their caregiver. In Taylor, we do what we call Mindful Mondays, and people are invited to come in, and sometimes we do an arts and craft project, music, movies, anything that stimulates a memory for these people. And it really, really is a heartfelt project and close to my heart. We also are mm -hmm. <coughs> partnering with the Area Agency on Aging. And right now, three of our libraries have what we call a program, Grandparents as Caregivers. And as you know, this is coming more and more the norm in today's society. And what we do is these grandparents come in, and some of them have absolutely no idea where to go or what to do with their young grandchildren. So they offer them services that are available. Uh, sometimes they just give them support as to, you know, you can do this. And it's really proving popular. And hopefully, by this time next year, every library will be on board with this. We also partnered with the Lackawanna Valley Heritage Association, and we did something called Tales on the Trail, where we were up on the trail in Carbondale, and we had people 
<clears throat> that our certified, certified therapy uh, dog owners come with their dogs and we read stories so people could stop and ask us about the dog, about the stories, and most uh, importantly of all, the library. We also are partnering with the Griffin Pond Animal Shelter where they come out every month and we do an adoption day and an activity that goes around the animals that come. And uh, finally, one thing that we do is what we call our creation station, and this is open to individuals and businesses for graphic, audio, and visual product projects, and it's perfectly free for anybody who's interested. It's not just books. It's a it's lot, not of, just books. lot of everything. Libraries just aren't for books anymore. No, the come community a long, centers. Long way. And I like to say our library is Taylor Community Library, and I like to feel as though we really, truly are the heart of our community. Mm -hmm. A beautiful library. Commissioner Cummings? Oh, that's where I got my library card, so. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> <There you> go. <laughs> um, no, you're doing a great job. Thank you. Um, do you get a lot of people that come in for the um, adoption day for the, the pets? Yes, we do. I was, you know, this is something new, and we just uh, started to uh, do this in the summer. And our very first time out, we had over 30 people show up for adopt. So not only did we get people that wanted mm -hmm. to adopt, we got people who wanted to be volunteers, who wanted to be foster. So it's a win-win situation for everyone. That's great. And now, are these spayed and, and neutered? Are these through? It's through Griffin Pond, and every animal that leaves our doors at Griffin Pond has to be spayed or neutered before they do go out. That's great. Mm -hmm. And they are vet certified, too. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, great job. Thank you so much Thank for all you're you. doing. Commissioner Terriani? I'm uh, always amazed at the passion of every employee from the library that I've met. Uh, every one of you have uh, a, a true love for what you do and you work very hard at it and how you've created and turned the libraries into uh, community centers and doing so many different things besides just being a library. Uh, you really, really work very hard at it and you have been very successful at it and it's uh, a, a jewel of Lackawanna County in Northeastern Pennsylvania. And thank you both very much for what you thank do. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, Taylor Library, so many things, resumes, uh, computers, movies, like everything, like adopting animals, you know, like it really is. It's, it's, it's a part of the community. It's like a community center. It's a beautiful facility. Um, there's just so much to be said, and the people of Taylor should be very, very proud, and you should be very proud of yourself. You've done a great job, and you've been doing this for 30-some years, and like I said, it's a passion, and you love it. And that's the reason why you do it. And like we always talk about it, if you love what you do, it's not work. It's it's, it's fun. Job, it's enjoyable. It's, it's yeah. It's, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a career. It is a career. But congratulations, and Mary, thank you because you have great people that work with. The we are so system. fortunate you to do. have people like Jeannie and like Sue, who was with us from the Dalton Community Library at your last yes. meeting. We appreciate your highlighting what we're doing, and I just want to mention that if you hear something that Jeannie said or that Sue said that's exciting to you, you don't have to live in Taylor or in Dalton to do those things. Your Lackawanna County Library card is good at any library in Lackawanna County, and you can get it for free by just dropping into a library and registering, or you can do it online at www.lcls.home. And what's the phone number too, Mary? I'm sorry, it's lcls.home.org. Sorry about that. What's the phone number for the library? Uh, the, each one is different. Okay. Um, but you can well, the reach main. the library system at 570-348-3003. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. And um, I'm not sure which library. Bring us, uh, let's have another library we'll next, you yes. next, next time out. Sounds okay? perfect. Thank, Thank you so you much. much. Thanks Thank for coming you. in. Thank Happy Thanksgiving. Okay, Commissioner Cummings. Well, I, we have some uh, special guests here from uh, one of the boards that I sit on and uh, uh, very proud to uh, be a part of uh, the Conservation District and Jerry Stiles and his crew, Cheryl and uh, Charles are here, so uh, let us know what we're working on. I don't know how special we are, but... Very, very special. <laughs> Thank Let me you tell you, she, she enlightens us with some of the stuff going on. <laughs> uh, we're very thankful to have her on our board of directors. Uh, at our most recent board of directors <coughs> meeting, there was a couple of topics that came up, commissioners, and um, Commissioner Cummings uh, encouraged us to come down and introduce them uh, to you, too. Um, I have two folks with me here today. I have uh, Charlie Charlesworth. Uh, Charlie is an associate director on the Conservation District Board. Uh, he's a resident of South Abington Township, and Charlie is also the past president of the Pennsylvania chapter of Trout Unlimited. Okay, he's going to talk about 
uh, an update on the Lackawanna River and also uh, the Susquehanna River. And I also have Cheryl Nolan. Cheryl is a uh, Lackawanna County Conservation District employee. She is our watershed specialist. She does a lot of uh, community outreach, uh, environmental education, and also she's very concerned with uh, water quality and doing uh, projects in Lackawanna County to improve uh, water quality for the residents. So, Charlie, why don't you come up first and you can introduce your topics. And I have one real quick plug at the end when they're done. Yes, absolutely. Greetings and salutations, commissioners. Oh, thanks goodness. for coming thanks in. Thanks for coming in. Um, as Jerry mentioned, my name is Charles Charlesworth. Uh, I've been asked by Commissioner Cummings to come in and, and speak on two issues. One is the, the water quality in the watersheds. And the second one is on um, youth conservation education. And yes. the first few handouts that I gave you there, um, in 2010, the state of Maryland filed suit against the state of Pennsylvania because Pennsylvania wasn't doing its part in restoring the Chesapeake Bay water quality. 2013, Pennsylvania agreed to a settlement uh, with the EPA and agreed to start paying more attention uh, than what we had been in the past on water quality issues. And we all know that uh, most water quality issues have to do with um, the farmer's fertilization, manure spreading, and, and runoff, and then also uh, stormwater runoff. But very few of us thought about pharmaceutical runoff. That's right. And uh, th this is out ast 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 yeah. astounding, excuse me. Um, they uh, noticed that in the Susquehanna River, the smallmouth bass had black spots on them and cancerous growth. After further evaluation, they found out that the smallmouth bass in the Susquehanna were hermaphroditic, meaning that the fish had both sexes, both male and female, in, in one fish. So the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission was tasked with finding out what was causing this uh, freak of nature. And what was established is that there's a huge amount of pharmaceuticals in the water supply, and in some cases in our drinking water supply. Um, it, it's very easy to, uh, to work on getting the, the majority of pharmaceuticals out of the water. We could, per, perhaps here in the county, we could establish some kind of drop off for used pharmaceuticals so that they don't get flushed down the toilet at right. home, which was has always been the custom. Um, you know, we actually, we do have dispensers, but we're gonna push it even further. Like, yeah. you know, cause it's, I was amazed when that was brought to our attention. I think it was the last meeting of the meeting before about the fish. Yeah, you know I mean, listen, <laughs> water is life and life is water. If you don't have water, you don't live. So yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna pu campaign push harder for this to. Now, one of the things that uh, was astounding was that one of the, the, the greatest amount of pharmaceuticals that were in the water were hormones, and particularly estrogen. And they think that it was possibly the estrogen that was causing the anomaly in these fish. So uh, I don't have the answer uh, because in, in that particular case, rather than being flushed down the toilet, um, it actually goes through uh, our digestive system, goes through our blood, bloodstream, and then uh, ends up going into the watershed. Um, I don't have the answer to how to address that, um, but there, there are scientists working on that. Um, the second thing I was asked to talk about was our um, youth conservation education in Lackawanna County. If you look at the, the first flyer or photograph that I put there, um, Trout Unlimited has a program called the Headwaters Program and we call it the stream of engagement. And we actually start educating kids in conservation um, beginning in kindergarten and then going into the, the teens with our TU teens and then the young adults, we have a College Five Rivers program. Um, 
If you look at the second photograph, that's a uh, photograph of one of our graduation classes yeah. up at the uh, oh no nice at the Scott Township yeah. uh, Municipal Building. Wherever you go in the United States, I can assure you that the majority of youth programs in conservation in Trout Unlimited are using the the template set by Lackawanna County. Everyone is utilizing uh, our program across the country because it's been so successful. These kids actually take every Saturday for eight weeks and come to the Scott Township Municipal Building and we teach them about conservation. The, the next flyer is our TU Teens program, uh, summer camp. We've uh, founded the second summer camp in Pennsylvania uh, and we operate out of Keystone College in June. We take a class of up to 20 kids and run them through this conservation class. And, and the last part, the last three photographs, uh, I, I want to talk about this program. The Pennsylvania Federation of Sportsmen's Clubs, and, it, yeah. and in the past, the Lackawanna Federation of Sportsmen's Club, they've conducted the oldest free kids fishing derby in America. It's been in existence for 69 years. Amazing. Two years ago, they ran out of money. Mm -hmm. And uh, Trout Unlimited had agreed to take over and partner with them and finance this program. Um, every year, we take uh, sometimes 180, 200 kids go to Lackawanna State Park and take part in this. Every child wins a prize. Now, what's so special about this, as I said, is it's been in existence for all this time. Every year for these programs, I have to raise between eighteen and nineteen thousand dollars to run these youth programs. In the past, and I'm talking uh, several years now uh, ago, Lackawanna County commissioners did sponsor, uh, in part, this program. Anywhere I've read from anywhere from twelve hundred to fifteen hundred dollars. I would hope that the the county would consider reinvesting in this program and keeping it going. We'll bring you into one of our next two yeah. work sessions. It's either the next one or the following because we got a, a lot of stuff going on towards yeah. the end of the year, but we'll get you in before the end of the year. Is that good? Yep. And I thank you. Yeah. That's the end of my report. Well, bef before you leave, um, the, uh, the reason that I was so uh, enthralled by this whole entire thing was we have uh, studies where fish have cancerous tumors on them, and as a nurse, obviously, and someone who's concerned about the environment as well, um, that was shocking to me, but the biggest shocker was when I read the report you sent. It was 90 to 100 percent of the fish in the Susquehanna were affected. I mean, 100 percent is, it's just outrageous for us to not have, have called more attention to this subject um, when our, you know, fish are, are basically being, I would assume, how are they even surviving? And, and fishermen are finding these in the water. They're mutated. So they're they're mutated. And, and they're mutated. They're, they're sex organs. They, they have both. But, but the cancer cells, I mean, we hear about, you know, um, our area sometimes. I know in Old Forge, we had a big thing about this in Old Forge, what was causing the cancer rates in the children years ago. Um, we didn't accept some of the landfill stuff. The residents chose not to because of that. Um, it's scary to think that these pharmaceutical agents are getting into our water and there's no way that we can get rid of them because they weren't thinking about that when they built these um, uh, sewer authorities I'm assuming so they they have no way to get rid of the pharmaceuticals so we're working on that now hopefully I'm, I'm assuming in caffeine and I think Cheryl's gonna speak more to this if I'm not if I'm not incorrect right okay and and the thing of it is is that you know I want brought it back to the commissioners because I would like our water tested. So let's see what we have as far as pharmaceuticals are concerned in our water. And, you know, I said at the conservation board, well, how do I go about getting that done? And, you know. I, uh, I, ha I started an email for you. Awesome. With information. I'm waiting for some information from. Uh, from Come on up, Cheryl. The local lab. The local lab. I'm going to get it together. It's going to have pricing and everything and packages to see you know, what they have available, what they actually are capable of testing for. Okay. So 
I have a phone call and an email into them right now. Awesome. You I'm know, we've always tried to be in the forefront. Like years ago, we were reading about another area where they had a lead contamination. Yes. I forget where it was. And um, we made sure we brought in American Water immediately. Like, tell us about our water, you know, because this type of thing affects, affects all, all of our citizens, but especially children, you know, to try to get to the bottom of it. So we're going to, we're yeah, looking into it. In, in the Susquehanna, the population was so decimated, um, and, and mind you now, the Fish and Boat Commission has made uh, great strides in a program they called SOS Save Our Susquehanna. Um, it actually skipped two full generations of oh, fish. Oh, man. Can you imagine? Uh, from a disease called the Young of the Year disease, which means they didn't survive to be to the, to the second year. Wow. Um, and it was primarily in what they call the, the, the central region of the Susquehanna and the south central region. Didn't reach quite up as, up as far as we are up here. But again, the Lackawanna is our watershed, but the Lackawanna is part of the Susquehanna watershed. Yeah. The, the, the fish that, in, that are in Lackawanna County uh, are basically brown trout in, in the Lackawanna River and brook trout in the tributaries. But we have to also consider the economic impact yes. of those fish in this county. Um, Lackawanna River is now listed in a, in a book that's called the 100 Best Trout Streams in North America. Uh, it might be 99, but it's still on the list of the We 100. always talk about Bernie McGurl and the great work that they do and sure. keep, like, because people don't realize that sores were run right into the river, like every, conceivable waste was running that river I remember the smell up to 30 40 year, 30 years ago and now it's beautiful and like you said there's award winning brown trout in it national magazines are publishing articles on the Lackawanna River uh, we've even got a, a, a fly fishing uh, f uh, fly fishing expo moving into the Poconos because they wanted to be closer uh, to the Delaware and the Lackawanna River with the expo um, I personally know of, of two gentlemen that flew from London on two separate occasions, not, not the same two guys together, but they flew from London to, to Philadelphia, and I picked them up in Philadelphia because they wanted to fish in the Lackawanna River. Nice. Fishing is a big deal, you know, and, and I just want to be clear, this is the Susquehanna that has all the problems, not the Lackawanna, just so we make that perfectly and clear. Actually, sure, we'll be talking about the... the, the water quality that we're working on testing for the Lackawanna. Yeah, and this is basically we're talking about pharmaceuticals both in people throwing their pills down the toilet, which they should stop doing immediately, and also when we're voiding, you know, our, you know, uh, urination basically has it in there, so it's going to come out in the water. So we have to try and figure out how our sewer authorities can um, rid the pharmaceuticals from the water when they go through the water treatment plant. So I, I'm hoping that's something that we're working on and um, becomes, uh, we shine some light on that so that they work on it quicker, you know, because we don't want to uh, see this going into the Chesapeake and into our seafood. And I, I mean, it, it just can, it's just a huge issue, huge issue. So well, thank you for bringing effect. it to our attention. It's yes. A domino effect. So. Yes. And, and we are doing so much better with the Chesapeake. So our farmers are doing a great, our conservation board does a great job. So proud of the work you're doing. And What's that Jerry Styles? Do you do a good job? <laughs> eh. <laughs> he's, he's awesome. They're <laughs> all does awesome. A great job. <laughs> I, I mean, they really do, uh, you know, such a great job, and they don't get the recognition, I don't think. So that's why I love when they well, come they in. So now, thank you so, so much. Thank you so Jerry, much. Jerry, thanks for coming in with us. Today. Cheryl, why don't you give us your... Yes. Well, on that subject, the yes. pharmaceuticals in the water, um, I, I don't think the technology is there yet uh. anywhere anywhere oh, yeah okay but as charlie said the, the scientists are working on it they they it's, this is a it's a huge issue with water quality everywhere not just here um so we're all keeping our eye on the 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 new things that are coming out on that um and that's why i was i was putting a an email together for you commissioner cummings that you had asked at the, the last meeting um there's there's a couple labs around, but I want to make sure that what I give you, they are actually certified labs, and I want, I want them to give me information on um, the cost to, to test our water okay. so that we have package options 
according to what we what is needed okay um residentially and and otherwise okay um so that's going to be coming i i expected to have it by now but i i have to light a fire every once in a while thanks Cheryl. so Go get em. um <laughs> The other, the other thing that uh, you may or may not know is that sediment is also uh, one of the, it's always one of the top two pollutants in our streams and rivers. And that's one of the tasks that we, we have at the Conservation District is to try to um, minimize that as much as possible. Uh, we have a couple projects going right now Last year, we started a project in Leggett's Creek in South Abington Township. Um, stream bank erosion is one of the causes of uh, sedimentation in our, in our streams and rivers. Um, construction is also another one. But anytime earth disturbance happens, we have the potential of getting sediment in our streams and rivers. And the reason that's a problem is because it coats the bottom of the stream. And a lot of life goes on on the bottom of the streams. Yeah. We have what's called cobble bottom streams here, or stones, basically. And when that gets coated in this sediment, nothing can live in the water. Um, macroinvertebrates, the little aquatic bugs that live in the water, are, are food for the fish that live in the water. And it's all this food chain that it continually goes, goes through the process that actually allows us to have life in the rivers. So um, when, the, when the bugs aren't there, the fish aren't there. Uh, so what we're doing is, we, in, in uh, South Abington last year, we actually put in three log veins that deflect the water away from the stream banks and toward the center of the stream, which allows the stream banks to vegetate. Once, once stream banks are vegetated, they, they can pretty much stay stable. So that's the point of these structures that we're putting in. Yeah. Um, there's a second phase to that project that we're gonna try to get in in 2019. We were supposed to get it in this year, but the water volume and the rain that we had just made that impossible. So we're hoping that next year, um, our weather pattern will change enough that we'll, we'll get them in. Um, the, the first part of the, the, this grant where we put the log veins in, that was a $7,000 grant that we got from the Coldwater Heritage Partnership, um, which is a partnership between DC, DC and our DEP and Trout Unlimited. And they offer these grants yearly. Um, it's, a great, it's a great organization. They, they do a great job with the grants. Um, and it's one of my favorite grants to apply for. Mm -hmm. So I, I will be using them as much as possible. <laughs> um, the second phase that, that I'm talking about doing in 2019 is going to be funded by Act 13 funds, which is monies that uh, the Conservation District receives from the natural gas industry. Uh, so we'll, that's where we'll be, uh, be able to do those pro the rest of that project um, with those funds. Um, another project that I'm working on right now is one along Roaring Brook. It's, it's a huge project, so that we're talking a lot more money and we're talking a lot more time and resources. The, the one section of stream bank there is probably 30 feet high. I'd say, and it's got to be a couple hundred feet long. So we're working in partnership with Trout Unlimited to try to come up with the funding. They have the technical assistance, so they're, gonna, they're working on the design, and we're all going to try to pool our resources and try to get something together to, to get that project moving along, too. Um, I, one more thing I just wanted to say about uh, uh, checking water quality in our streams and rivers. We, we partnered also with Trout Unlimited. Trout Unlimited is a great organization. They offer a lot of resources, even to us in, at local government. Um, but we partnered with them trying to do a study of the Lackawanna River and the largest tributary, the Roaring Brook uh, section, um, this year. 
unfortunately, again, we had so much rainfall that the equipment couldn't handle the volume of water uh, that was in, that was in the, the river. Um, so we're going to try to do it again. Um, you know, it, it's just the weather's been working against us on so many levels. But uh, just to let you know that we are out there trying. And we, we did a study in 2011 that we're trying to duplicate so that we can see what changes, if any, have happened since 2011. So that's all I have. Unless Thank you, you have so any questions. much, Cheryl. Yeah. Thank you. The third Wednesday in January, we're going to be releasing the report. Oh, the, the third the third Wednesday of January, uh, Trout Unlimited is going to be releasing uh, the portion of the report that we were able to do. Okay. Um, this year. Uh, th someone's coming from Trout Unlimited National, right, to present the results. Um, so, at what time is the, ch the meeting? It's seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Trip Park. Yes, Trip Park Community Center is where the the meeting is being held. So, if anybody wants to come, I guess we're going to open it to the public, right? What yes. date is that? Uh, January. What was the date? Third Wednesday of January. Third Wednesday of January. I don't know I'm not that sure what that is, but seven p.m. Trip Park. Community Center, 2000 Dorothy Street, Scranton. Where is it? Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thanks you, Cheryl. Coming. Great job. Thank you. I'm back real quick. <laughs> uh, the commissioners are aware that the Conservation District has and has had a no-till cedar that we rent out to the agricultural community. Uh, this past fall, we also purchased a commercial grade lime spreader that we are also uh, making available for rent um, for the agricultural community. Um, the lime spreader is available for a uh, flat fee of $150 a day. There is no delivery charge um, associated with that unless you live outside of Lackawanna County. Uh, so those two um, pieces of equipment are available for the, um, the, the ag community in, in the county. So I just wanted to make you aware that we have two pieces of equipment now. Uh, so that the the lime spreader is going to be valuable. Um, applying lime is good for the for soil health, and it it also helps the plant's ability to uptake nutrients from the soil. So it's got a soil benefit, and it also has an economic benefit that it makes the plants healthier. So thank you very much for having us down here. Jerry, thanks, thanks for coming Jerry. in. Thanks Jerry. for all the thank work you. that you all do. Thank you very much. I greatly appreciate like, your time. A lot of people don't realize, you know, I mean what this is like behind the scenes but we're going to try to make sure we get it out there yeah. we want people to realize what's going on so thank you for coming in Happy thank you so much great job everyone thank you so much i appreciate your work opportunity for the uh, public to address the board on agenda items only okay ordinance second reading 18-0235. Thank you, Commissioner. This is an ordinance adopting the annual budget for the County of Lackawanna for the year 2019. An ordinance of the County of Lackawanna in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, fixing the tax rate and enacting the budget for the year 2019 and appropriate specific sums estimated to be required for the specific purposes of county government here and after set forth during the current fiscal year. Be it ordained and enacted, and it is hereby resolved and enacted by the Board of Commissioners of the County of Lackawanna, Pennsylvania, Section 1, that a tax, and the same is hereby levied on all property within the said county, subject to taxation for county purposes for the fiscal year 2019, as follows. Tax rate for general county purposes, the sum of 40.49 mills on each dollar of assessed valuation, or the sum of 404.90 cents for each $100 of assessed valuation. For debt purposes, the sum of 13.11 mills on each dollar of assessed valuation, or the sum of 131.10 cents on each $100 of assessed valuation. For the purposes of the county library system, the sum of 2.28 mills on each dollar of assessed valuation, or the sum of 28.20 cents on each $100 of assessed valuation. For the purposes of the culture and education fund, the sum of 1.0 mills or the sum of 10 cents on each $100 of assessed valuation. Total millage for all purposes is the sum of 57.42 mills. All prior ordinance or resolutions or parts here are inconsistent herewith are repealed. Commissioners. Here to address the board is Tom Durkin, our CFO. Tom. Good morning, Good morning Tom. Commissioners. Good morning, Tom. Um, 
as the ordinance read by the chief of staff says uh, we have no tax increase in the 2019 budget the millage is the same millage as we implemented for 2018 there's a little bit of change in uh, the amount allocated between the general fund and the debt service fund but still the, the, in total there is no tax increase the millage is the same um, in addition the budget that was presented at the meeting two weeks ago uh, had a an anticipated deficit of just under two point seven million dollars and that remains unchanged as well so uh, going into 19 we have an anticipated operating deficit of about two point seven million dollars and we are balancing that operating deficit by anticipating the use of some of our accumulated surplus to offset that deficit Does anyone have any questions for Mr. for Mr. Durkin? Okay. Just to remind the commission also, there will be a pension contribution of half a million dollars this year going into the pension Absolutely. fund. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I'll say the comments. We'll do the motion, and then we'll do another question. Okay. Um, I'd like to make a motion for the annual budget of the County of Lackawanna. For the year of 2019 with no tax increase do i have a second second okay on the question commissioner cummings on the question thank you tom and to the finance department and um i always forget her name mary Jo granahan, granahan is commissioner new. our new budget Sorry. director yes, mary joe excuse me worked very very diligently on the budget this was the first budget that she did she was kind of thrown into this at the last minute but she accepted the responsibility willingly and she did an excellent job um, and I would also like to thank uh, as you've done in the past um, all of the county department heads who we've worked with uh, uh, the controllers office for their cooperation in getting the budget hearings done and uh, all department heads who, who do an extraordinary job and getting a budget and making our job easier but uh, again a lot of the credit goes to Mary Jo this was her first bu budget and she hunkered down and, and got it done and, and we're pretty proud of that I am too and thank you so much for your work on that I appreciate it and um, I, I do want to say that I appreciate the fact that I spoke with Benicon out at CCAP this week so I did not get that opportunity here in the office um, but um, I'm happy to hear that it was just an 8% increase in and and we were planning on a 10%, well, just under 8% increase in our health insurance costs. I'm sorry. The, the health insurance, the budgeted health insurance is actually a 7.9% increase over 2018. However, we're looking at an increase in the amount we get reimbursed uh, due to... Uh, the, yeah, well, that's part of the, I mean, what we've considered a 7.9% increase. We... Um, because of the way that we pay our insurance through um, Benicon, which is the manager of our program, uh, the Pennsylvania Health Insurance um, Purchasing Cooperative, um, we annually fund at the maximum amount. And we do that because it's budgetable. We can budget how much we're going to pay into the, the uh, consortium and pay that over the course of the year. And since we've been in the consortium in 2016, we started, I believe, um, we have annually been able to uh, get a refund from Benicon based on our actual claims compared to the maximum claims that we fund. Um, in 2018, we received, um, from 2017, we received about a million three, $1.3 million in premiums, theoretical premiums that we had paid came back to us at the end of the year. We anticipate for 2018, according to our most recent uh, notification, which was through September 30th, that our refund should be in the vicinity of about $2 million. Um, and we're anticipating the same for 2019. Having put all those numbers into our, our program and, and worked with it, the net amount, including the refunds, is, is what's going to increase by 7.9% commission. Yeah. 
Well, I'm just hoping that um, with the move to the globe, we see even additional savings next year, which I, I'm sure we will. I'm just waiting to look at those numbers. I can't wait to move over there and see all the uh, areas that we do end up uh, saving money. Um, and look forward to the move. I was down there and uh, took a look around. They're, we're doing pretty good. Um, hopefully we'll be in shortly. And uh, I'm just uh, happy that we are not getting a tax increase. We aren't voting on a tax increase. Uh, again, would prefer to decrease taxes. Um, and uh, I have specific uh, departments that I would have uh, utilized to do that. Um, but uh, no tax. I'll take the no tax increase. So, thank you for your work on that, and thank you to all the departments to to help work on that, so that we made sure that the citizens uh, aren't any more harmed than they've already been by uh, taxes uh, on properties. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words, Commissioner. You're welcome, Commissioner Terry. Uh, Tom and Mary Jo, thank you very much for all your work, and to all of our department heads. Uh, our um, pension board. Payment will be five hundred thousand dollars. That's correct. That's we have budgeted, Commissioner. Yes. No, I'm good. Okay, um, Tom, I'd like to thank you for you know the great job that you always do, and and our intern budget director, Mary Jo Granahan. Thank you. Great job this year. Um, you know, I mean, this means so much to. Uh, the people of Lackawanna County, you know, our directors, our assistant directors living within their budget. Um, no TAN. We're not even having a tax anticipation note. Districts will have it. City may have it. We're not going to be having that this year. You know, we, we really, really, really work hard to live within our means, and it really matters to the citizens of our community. And, um, he said, like, just, just this project alone, just the globe itself, like the fact of the no, the leases and the rents pay for it. You know I mean? It just shows that we're trying to find ways to pay for things that, you know I mean, that could cost a tax increase to the citizens. I mean, we understand that all the citizens in their homes, that they have a budget and they got to live within the budget. Well, we try to live within the budget every single day, and we work really, really hard at it. You know I mean, we're even talking about some other ideas for next year's budget so there won't be an increase for 2020. You know, there's a lot of things that can be done, and we're trying to view them, go through them, and utilize them for the next budget going forward. But our staff, all of our employees, especially Tom, Mary Jo, thank you. Um, it really matters to not have an increase this year. And um, it's it's about watching what we're spending, and we do it every day. So I'd just like to thank everyone for what they do. Um, roll call. Commissioner Terriani? No. Commissioner Cummins? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. Thank you, commissioners. Okay. Commissioner, we're going to go out of order yeah, at this I point. Uh, Chief Graziano is, is here. If we can go to item number 18-240 and 18-241. Sounds good. Do we need him? Okay. Chief, sorry I didn't realize you're in the hall. As soon as we, okay. we get you in and we get you out. Okay, hey, we're at 18-0240. Thank you, Commissioner. This is a uh, entering into a memorandum of understanding with the Scranton Police Department. Be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Scranton Police Department for the application and implementation of the Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant. This funding will be used for the purchase of 42 weapon-mounted cameras in the amount of $21,000. And here, of course, is the Chief, uh, Chief Graziano. Carl, where would they be, all, all around the city and stuff? Yes, so uh, the goal is is uh, this particular grant uh, would pay for a portion of the weapon mounts for, or the weapon mounted cameras for all of our patrol division. Currently, we're actually in training this week uh, for body cameras uh, that will be implemented and go live in January. Uh, the problem with body cameras when you're talking about deployment of uh, it, you know, shooting with your firearm is that that can be where the, the, the uh, body cameras mounted can uh, be obstructed. Uh, by your hands. So the uh, the flashlight camera on the, the undermount of the, the gun 
uh, when the gun is deployed, the camera would activate audio and video and would capture an additional uh, first person angle of, uh, you know, God forbid, any shootings uh, so that we have multiple angles of, of camera angles. So it's, it's really about, uh, you know, bringing uh, safety to the officers and uh, open, accountable, and uh, transparency uh, uh, as much as we can to the department. Carl, thank you for what you and the Scranton Police Force does and all of our other uh, police departments throughout Lackawanna County. Um, being in law enforcement isn't easy today, but we're really happy that you're here and you're doing a great job making sure that everybody's safe. Okay, Commissioner Cummings. Um, Carl, so proud of the work you're doing. And, um, you know, this is, it's sad that this is actually needed. Um, law enforcement gets such a bad rap sometimes and it's it's very frustrating for the public and for myself to even witness when that happens and um, just know that there are people that back you a hundred percent and you know we appreciate that and we appreciate everything the commissioner absolutely too. and you know um, breaks my heart to think that um, they would be questioning the ethics and morals of our, our police that go out there and put their lives in the line every single day and uh, you know um, I'm sorry that that seems to be happening in this country a lot and um, I hope that, that that narrative changes and I hope that with this work that you're doing and these cameras that you're going to show the public that you know what um, this is not in fact what you're thinking it is we are doing our job um, we're doing it to the best of our ability and that's that's a very difficult thing to do um, thank you thank you so much for everything you've done for the public and thank you to all your officers um, I appreciate all their work thank, thank you. you all Commissioner Notariani. Thanks, Carl. So the public knows this. The uh, Scranton Police Department uses us as a conduit for this type of uh, of a grant. So, but thank you for everything. We appreciate your support. No, we're, we're, your so, we're here for you. We, okay. we are, really are. Okay, um, I'd like to make a motion entering into a memorandum of understanding for the Scranton Police Department. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Commissioner Notariani. Yes. Commissioner Cummings. Yes. Commissioner O'Malley. Yes. 18-0241. Thank you, Commissioner. This is a resolution entering into a memorandum of understanding again with the Scranton Police Department. Be a result of the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby enter into a memorandum of understanding with the Scranton Police Department for the application and implementation of the Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Assistance Grant. This funding will be used for the purchase of a laser scanner by FARO Technologies, Inc. in the amount of $19,133. And again, the uh, Chief is with us, Chief. Again, this, this system we have already purchased, so this is a reimbursement on a, on a system that's already in place and working. Uh, and it, to my knowledge, it's the only scanner, uh, this particular Farrell's 3D scanner in Northeast PA. Uh, and it's being used all over the county uh, for serious incidents, crime scenes, uh, fatal accident scenes, uh, where it does uh, it makes our department more efficient and effective uh, and can give 3D imaging uh, scans. It scans thousands of points within uh, you know, a, a crime scene or an accident scene uh, puts them into a 3D uh, digital image and can actually be used for animation uh, to actually show the path of a car uh, that, that uh, to a after, before impact and after impact. So oh. it's become a very valuable tool. Uh, and again, we appreciate the support, uh, you know, in, in moving uh, our agency forward, not specifically for our agency, but for the citizens who are getting better service. Absolutely. Uh, does the board have any questions for Carl? Okay, I'd like to make a motion in entering into a memorandum of understanding with the Scranton Police Department. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Commissioner Terriani. Yes. Commissioner Cummins. Yes. Commissioner O'Malley. Yes. Carl, thank you very thank much. You. Tell you guys thank you for everything they do every day and happy thank Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Chief. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me get back to Mr. Nobilio. Okay, 18-0236. Thank you, Commissioner. This is a resolution approving current payables. Be a result of the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby approve the following payables. Lackawanna County General Fund, numbers 272448 through 273588. 258 inclusive, totaling $2,192,479.15, and electronic transfers, transfers, including all payroll accounts, totaling $5,804,329.20. Okay, Gary, everything's everything's up to par? Everything's good? Yes, it is, Commissioners. All payables have been audited, approved, and all are in order. Okay. Any questions? I, I just have a comment. Um, Gary, your staff is uh, tremendous. Um, Reggie and uh, Jermaine, 
attended the budget meetings, uh, as you well know, and they were invaluable to us. I mean, they, they really went above and beyond any questions that I had. They, they pulled up information, anything I asked for. So I just wanted to let, make sure that you knew. Um, tremendous job, and thank you so much. Um, obviously, your leadership has proven uh, to uh, be above and beyond, and your staff have uh, proven that in the work that they've done. Thank you. Thanks so much, Commissioner. I, I totally agree with you. I have a great staff. All nine individuals I'm, that I didn't work mean at to the leave controller's out, office just are uh, are just terrific. And Reggie and Jermaine, who are here at every meeting, of course, yeah. are uh, doing a fantastic job. I appreciate your kind thoughts You're and welcome. words. And that goes to all your staff, trust me. Thank but you. they were at the meetings, and I appreciate the work they did in the budgets. Thank Thanks. You. Anyone else? They are. They're very diligent. Congratulations, guys. Thanks for being here and supporting Gary, making yeah. sure the controller's office <coughs> is doing the right thing every day. You got us more money, too, so thank you. <laughs> That's, I'd like to make a motion approving current payables. Do I have a second? Second. We'll call. <coughs> Commissioner Teriani? Yes. Commissioner Cummings? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. Eighteen dash zero two three seven. Thank you, Commissioner. This is a resolution entering into professional service agreements. Be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby enter into professional service agreements for the fiscal year 1819, uh, as attached here to for the Department of uh, Office and Family Services. And here to address us is our director, Bill Browning. Bill. Good morning, Bill. Good morning. Uh, the contracts are for with the Administrative uh, Office of Pennsylvania Courts. We have a uh, we're part of a, a, a pilot county uh, called Family Engagement uh, Initiative to teach our, our workers and um, the, the courts on how to better uh, engage families uh, so they can make lasting change. This is a $5,000 grant from the, uh, uh, the court to uh, um, do additional training on that subject matter. The uh, other one, uh, George, uh, Georgia State University Research. They are the university that is in charge of uh, licensing, certifying our safe care training, which is a, a scientifically uh, based, uh, an evidence-based uh, training for uh, parenting instruction. We've had that in place for several years. Uh, we have a contract for uh, uh, outreach from EOTC um, for supervised visitation. And then last on the, uh, uh, not last, I'm sorry, uh, uh, we have uh, Heather Stewart, who is a counselor, uh, who does some uh, trauma-based uh, counseling for uh, for uh, some of our clients. Uh, then uh, Binti Incorporated is a software uh, uh, company that specializes in recruitment uh, um, strategies for foster parents, and we will be um, engaging uh, their services so we can bring our formerly purchased service in-house to do the uh, uh, recruitment and training. And there'll be a nominal savings uh, by bringing that sa saving uh, service in house. Okay. Does the board have any questions for Mr. Browning? I'd like to make a motion entering into a professional service agreement. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Commissioner Terriani? Yes. Commissioner Cummings? Yes. Commissioner O'Malley? Yes. I have a comment on that. Sure. Thank you and Would happy Thanksgiving. Well, Bill, you got another one. Just like one comment, uh, Bill. There, there's a few of the grants that are there that that we had discussed, and I, I just disagree with the premise of that money being required for the, those specific things. But I'm voting for them um, because of the fact that I didn't research it enough uh, the last program that we talked about, and um, but I will be. So I'm hoping that it's not as um, uh, you know. I mean, I, I just I have to come into question as to whether or not it's important to tell parents to keep medications off the table. I don't think that that's, I mean, that's just an example of something that was said in our meeting that they do, but um, I just find it hard to believe that, you know, common sense items like that have to be paid for and instructed on. But I do appreciate the work that you're doing. It has nothing to do, I know this is a study we're doing, so um, let's see how it turns out, and then I'll make more decisions after the study is completed. If you could just make sure I get those results, I'd appreciate that. Yep, and they're ongoing, and uh, some of them are published, and I'll provide them to you as well. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Okay. Hold on, Bill. Bill, you got one more. One more. The, the Binti contract. <laughs> oh, that one. I, I, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I included that in the. Uh, I, thought with that the others. I thought it was included too, but yeah. we didn't. Let's just vote it right. so it's good stuff. Okay. 18 0238. 
Thank you, Commissioner. This is a resolution entering into a software agreement. Be resolved the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby enter into a three-year service agreement with Binti Incorporated of Oakland, California for a software for the Office of Youth and Family Services and an amount not to exceed $8,000 a year. Okay. <coughs> I like okay. To uh, before I inadvertently combine the items, uh, this is, uh, again, the, the software company that I spoke about uh, for recruitment and uh, uh, training of our foster parents. I'd like to make a motion entering to a software agreement. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Commissioner Tyrion. Yes. Commissioner Cummings. Yes. Commissioner O'Malley. Yes. Thank Thanks, you. Bill. Thanks. 18-0242. Thank you, Commissioner. This is a resolution accepting the HAVA Security Grant Funds. Be it resolved, the Board of Commissioners of Lackawanna County does hereby accept the HAVA Security Grant Funds in an amount totaling $237,384.65 from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to be used towards the purchase of voting equipment. And here to address the Board is Marion Medallis, our Director of Elections. Marion. Good morning, Commissioners. Good morning, Marian. This past spring, the federal government appropriated funds to the states which is known as the 2018 HAVA election security grants to improve election systems. The Department of State implemented a formula based on the total number of registration totals from as of the primary of 2018. As a, uh, Attorney Fredrickson indicated, Lackawanna County is um, entitled to receive $237,384 and 65 cents but this grant is strictly to be used for the purchase or lease of new have a compliant voting systems now I'm this is our little problem with this I, I was in I, uh, this one kind of didn't say caught us off guard but we were talking about this um, this has to be voted today, right? This is the last day it can be voted on? Yes. Last time we could decide on it. Decide yeah. on? It has to be, we have to let the state know by the end of November 30th mm -hmm. if we're going to accept the November money 30th. going forward. Right. See, the problem is, isn't that by basically saying that we think this is a great idea? Because we really don't. Well, no, well, Commissioner. No. That's no. what we went down to. Yeah. You know, yeah. Talk to us about well. it. Yeah. yeah, well, we sat in on the meeting, and I did ask your question, Marion, about the de decertification. Right. And there is no answer yet. There hasn't been an answer. Right. So, um, you know, uh, the problem is is that we really don't have any answers and our equipment uh, might be ac adequate we don't know right so to this day we still don't know yeah so um, my question then was is this going to negatively impact uh, the unification that we all had as commissioners across the state um, in making our point that we felt it was not necessary to do this in 2020 um, in a presidential election for one and in two that there were some <coughs> counties like ourselves that actually have equipment that has paper ballots right. so we shouldn't be required to replace them and be decertified and I was informed that it would not negatively impact that yeah. uh, unification and, process. and the other important thing commissioners with this is if we agree to accept this money this is not saying that we're going to buy new election machines correct is what this letter is what this agreement is just guaranteeing that if we do buy new election machines we have to use this money only for election makes sense we can't use it for security or for other issues salaries or that first it has to be used for for new election machines going Specifically forward for the machines themselves right. correct yeah and there is a lot of questions as the commissioner did state down there with regard to going forward whether our machines may be exempted from being replaced because they are paper ballot or if we're going to have to replace them there, there's no answers to that at this point but we're we're hoping to have them shortly so or within the next year just like the card in front of the horse it's like okay yeah Okay, um, I'd like to make a motion to access, ex accepting the HAVA Security Grant Fund. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, roll call. Commissioner Teriani? Yes. Commissioner Cummings? Yes, uh, with the commentary that I completely disagree with this unfunded mandate that was thrown at us by the state yet again, and uh, with the fact that there are already, um, it looks like 13 counties that are have paper ballots and shouldn't be made to uh, purchase equipment that's unnecessary and in a presidential election to throw that at the elections board uh, is ridiculous and that would mean as of this year uh, we would be you know unable to uh, have a say in our own voting machines because we're all running for election next year which is another major problem for me so 
Okay. I'm voting yes, but I'm in the hope that we're not going to change what we currently have. I think That's our right. system works very well. But. Okay. Yes. Okay. Opportunity for the public to address the board. Commissioners, other business. Thanks, Mary, and we'll be seeing you in about five minutes. Oh, we have an election no. board meeting, too? Okay. Well, um, I just want to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving, first of all. Second of all, um, I just want to uh, reiterate from the Conservation Board how uh, proud I am of all the work that they're doing, and I'd like to thank my fellow commissioners for allowing them the time to come in, uh, because I know it is long to, to take uh, time to discuss all that, those issues. Um, but I would like to generate more, um, uh, you know, people towards the fact that this, you know, Trout Unlimited is here. We do have a fishing uh, program that we utilize, and, and maybe more kids would be more engaged in that if we brought it out into the public, and hopefully um, maybe the Scranton Times could generate some of that enthusiasm for fishing in our, uh, in our county, um, which will then bring more uh, information on the topic of water quality in our, our county. So I look forward to the water quality test studies that we get done and uh, thank you for your help in that, both of, of you. Thank sure. you, Commissioner. Um, also, in regards to that, um, we have a lawsuit pending right now against the pharmaceutical companies because of their um, false advertising uh, and making people think that opioids are not as addictive. Um, I feel that uh, they hold a, a large part in, in why we're in this crisis we're in today um, with no, f no studies that were done uh, and just pushed it through propaganda uh, marketing. Now we have another area where our water quality is being affected by pharmaceutical companies um, and, and it's, it's serious. I mean, we have 100% of our fish with black cancerous cells on the outside of their body and they're not even living one generation after that in the Susquehanna. That's a problem. Um, I think that warning labels should be uh, some, whoever does this, I, I just put a shout out there, uh, maybe warning labels can be started to be put on uh, pharmaceuticals um, that do not dissipate in the water um, and uh, they should be helping us pay for any of the studies that we have to currently do at the state level in order to figure out how to get these uh, pharmaceuticals out of our uh, watershed. Um, so that that's just two points I'd like to make. and. Uh, um, last but not least, I had a chance to go over it to the Globe. Again, I've been taking tours over there a lot, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I was yelling at our other, uh, one of our commissioners to just get them moving, move it, move it, move it. Come on, let's go. I want to get over there. I was supposed to be over there November 1st. Why am I not there yet? So um, anyway, I did get a chance to see my office, and I just wanted to share a picture that Fran Pantusa took of the beautiful view that this commissioner will be having when I move into my office. So, um, Jeff, you might be interested in, in seeing this. <laughs> that is the view from my window. <laughs> oh. Is that ironic or did John do something to me? <laughs> you want a picture of it? <laughs> That's my office window. <laughs> Jerry, did you see that? Yeah, I did see it for a moment. <laughs> Thanks, Grant, for that picture. Too. Yes, yes, I get a walkway. I, I, I'm excited. I can't wait. Um, I'll probably be moving over there before they even allow us to do it, so I don't know. But um, I'm looking forward to the move, and I know a lot of our, some of our offices are now packing up their boxes and getting ready and prepared to go. We're just waiting for some occupancy permits, and, um, you know, I, I'm just uh, excited about it. I know that our staff is excited about it. I think maybe we should have them walk through to see um, where their offices might be so they saw how far. Maybe we can have a tour for our employees before, you know, beforehand. Sure. Maybe get them excited and, and moving in there. And, uh, Marion, thank you, as always, for all the work you've d you do. I, I greatly appreciate your help in the elections and a great job that you did. And hopefully we'll get through this uh, process quickly. Um, and everyone out um, in the viewing audience, please have a safe... Uh, travels and a uh, happy and wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. Thank you, everyone. Commissioner Terry, any? Um, I'm involved in a lot of budgets, lots, lots and lots of different budgets through the years. And um, we didn't have an increase this year. We didn't have an increase the year before, the year before that, the year before that, the year before that going back 
I'm just wondering, Commissioner, why did you vote no? Well, again, it comes back to the uh, pension funding. Uh, the fact that it was funded one year and you discretionarily decided not to fund it. Uh, the monies we spent on the uh, additional legal fees, uh, professional services increase in the budget. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a good solid budget. We still have a $2 million plus deficit. Uh, I understand there's there's many many good parts to it, but there's other parts of it that I am not comfortable with and I don't think that we should do. Uh, I think that's the uh, the way that Scranton School District and the city of Scranton got into the messes they're in. And uh, I, I think it's more important that we that we do find a way to fund our pension funds. So it doesn't happen. And it, it, it's great that the stock market is doing wonderful now. It won't be. As it everyone must. has seen. History has shown us it goes what goes up goes down, and it can certainly out. occur. So, again, it's not something I'm I'm comfortable with, and I've stated it repeatedly. Uh, and again, when we did have it funded that the one year, you decided not to do it. You have control over how this money is spent, basically, uh, and I'm not comfortable with that either. Okay. Well, how much would have you liked to have put into the pension if you were able to? Exactly. Uh, what, like what how much? The, what was the amount that we were, we should put in? Was like two million millions. To stay even. To, you know what I mean? The annual required contribution for the pension plan is approximately three and a half million dollars, and, and has been at that rate since probably 2010. And how many how many past administrations have paid that? Again, well, no, I'm just I'm just want to just clarify. Okay. No, I'm, I, I'm on now. If I may approach. Yes. That. <clears throat> the pension plan, the last full annual required contribution that was made was actually made in 2006 for 2005. After 2005's annual required contribution was paid, there wasn't another contribution made until I believe it was 2013. And no contributions, no contributions, no contributions were made between 2005 and 2013. In 2013, I believe, Commissioner, we began making $500,000 contributions. We did that for 13, 14, 15, and then in 16, we made a $600,000 contribution. In 17 and 18, we made no contributions, and now we're budgeting a half million dollar contribution again. Okay. With that being said, I'd also like to just bring up that the state, and nothing against the city, our pension's in good shape. Our finances are in such good shape that when the state wasn't able to get a budget passed, we were able to stay afloat. We actually helped some of our authorities, I forget which one exactly, with some monies. Was it, the, was it Meals on Wheels? I think we did some credit for them, or we let them have an option for some kind of monies along the way? That, that is correct, Commissioner. In so addition, like, we, we also funded all of our state-funded programs, like the Office of Youth and Family Services. We didn't Services. miss a beat, did we? Even though we didn't get money, um, I think it was probably until... March or April, anyway, it might have been later than that. We didn't get money that was coming to us for the state funded portion of those programs. We continued to fund those programs because we were able to, because we were fiscally sound. I would never make a half fast decision to hurt anyone in our county. I made sure that I reached out to our actuary, spoke to them, and they told us at that time we were okay. That's why. That's why we had a 500,000, but there's been years in the past where we haven't, and maybe next year we'll add more. But right now, we passed a zero budget. That's what the citizens of Lackawanna County need. It's our fiduciary responsibility to find every way possible to make sure that we don't increase taxes and make sure all of our services are run well. And that's what this government does plus going out and getting us a new government center, plus making sure there's no tax increase or millage increase. They're the things that matter to the citizens of Lackawanna County. 
and we work very hard to make this happen. Every if day. I may, Commissioner, maintaining an investment grade rating and, oh yeah, as oh, well, oh which is critically important our, to the county. Our a stable bond rating, <laughs> um, our elimination of the surveillance fee that was as high as a million dollars and as low as four hundred thousand, and eliminate it. Uh, our going back and and uh, refinancing our bonds our mortgage on the globe store which we didn't pay a penny until we start to draw out our recent capital improvement um, monies that we received another mortgage that we're not going to pay on anything until we start to draw out you know I mean we really I really believe our county our employees our directors do a great job and I'm very 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 happy with this budget Okay. Uh, can I can I can just comment since you added something else in there? Sure, go ahead. Um, yeah, I am. Um, I, I am quite confused as to why, Commissioner, you would vote no. I mean, that, that's your prerogative. I understand that, and and I appreciate the fact that you're standing on your on your principle. But, um, I mean, if the pensions are such an issue, then maybe we should look at going into a, a different type of pension and start doing a 401k for all future. Um, uh, Employees. I mean, we could do that if, if that seems to be uh, causing some problems. Boy, Tom jumped right up on that one. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, Commissioner, as a matter of fact. <laughs> wow, you didn't even ask permission. It was whoop, I, right I, I'm up. sorry, Commissioner, but, but no, I, I think it needs to be clear. We cannot no, implement a 401k. Why? We are required by state law to maintain the exact pension that we have. We looked into back in 2011 excuse me I mean we would all still have the same except for new employees why couldn't you do that for new employees no we cannot I mean we have what's called I believe a 403 B an investment that we call um, it's with Voya um, it, it's a deferred compensation plan is what we call it it's similar to a 401k employees can elect to participate in that the county makes no contribution to that though because we're not allowed to in 2011 we actually researched the potential of doing exactly what you're saying grandfathering every existing employee into the existing plan and implementing a 401k for uh, new employees going forward mm -hmm. the state will not allow us to do that there were actually four or five counties at that time that put a committee together and went to the state to their legislatures and the legislature said no we're, we're not changing the county pension law so we are required to maintain the defined benefit plan that we now have we do have an optional deferred comp plan which is similar to a 401k our employees can and some do contribute to that but the county cannot establish a 401k as such because the law says we can't unfortunate but true really john why is that that's correct it's a 403b is what it's known as it's it's just the 401k 403b are just different sections of the internal revenue code that identify what these plans are and where they can be used and where they can't be used. Do they mandate us to put money towards that, <coughs> a certain percentage? Are we man? No, we are. We're not actually. We are technically not allowed to make a contribution into that plan for our employees. It's a strictly voluntary plan for the employees to make a contribution to if they would would so choose. We are not allowed to establish a plan where the county makes a contribution to a plan similar to that, uh, a, a 401k type savings plan, because we are required to maintain our defined benefit plan that we have. Right. Okay. Thanks, but okay. well, I, I still well, think that that there's other issues that we could have addressed with that, and and I mean, we could have talked about this in the work sessions, and and I, you never even brought it up to any of us. So I'm just, it's just frustrating when, I mean, I am the Republican, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to be, I, I'm trying to be. Uh, nonpartisan and 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 I'm trying to do what's best for the taxpayers up here I really really am and and I'm trying not to be that um, you know uh, as they describe me to be um, you know the crazy Tea Party person or whatever they want to call me um, I'm trying to although Tea Party people are not crazy they're they're very uh, well-rounded people and they know their stuff and I'm one of them um, but uh, the crazy needs to go because that's not accurate and I think I've done a good job in trying to make sure that 
I'm constantly fighting for the taxpayers in regards to wherever um, we're looking at cuts or, um, you know, not bringing new projects to the surface that are spending money. And with the consolidation, I mean, that's something I, I ran on in the election. And, you know, I'm proud of that vote. And, and I, I think that, you know, the three of us actually do have the same uh, mindset in regards to conservative principles. And I think that if you would just let us know. I mean, well, I, neither that, of I, us would be. Um, I've, I've stated that often, Commissioner, and there are other things that I'm not comfortable with. We okay, well, I don't that. know what they are. So, I mean, I wish you would talk to us about them in work session. That's all. I, I, I just really do, because I mean, I value both of your opinions. Sure, I do. You, were, you were not aware of the fact that we spent $600,000 on legal fees. You were not aware of that. Uh, yeah. This is a, yeah. this is approved by our council, and I could ask Mr. Yeah. Sarah. He knew this was going on, yeah. so no, don't try to act like this is something like it's like six hundred thousand dollars got thrown out the window. Oh, the council knew all this. That's their job. Yeah. And the and the other thing is, <laughs> the other th <laughs> the the other thing is, you didn't go to any of the budget hearings. You know what I mean? We I did. Yeah. You know what I mean? You you were involved. here while we sat at a budget. I'm not going to fight you, but we were here, and you were here, and you come at a budget hearing. That's our fiduciary responsibility. That's what it is. It's our job. But there's two things we did. August comes, they start budget hearings. We start working on the budget. We get into September, October. We start having meetings. You know what I mean? It's it happens. It's textbook. It's been going on as long as the commissioners have been coming here. You know what I mean? It's just textbook. But okay, I'd like to just uh, to say that um, we had uh, that we had some great things coming up in Lackawanna County. Thursday, November 29th, we're going to be having the tree lighting at the historical Lackawanna County Courthouse. 6 p.m. The Catholic Choral Society is going to be there. So everyone's invited. Hot cocoa cookies put on by Scranton Unico and La Festa Italiano. Great night. We turn on the, the tree a little bit after 6. There's sing-alongs. The Catholic Chorus Choral Group does a great job. Um, December 1st, the Santa Train. Uh, this is a great opportunity for everyone throughout. How many the stops are there for that? Oh, this. <laughs> Carbondale. Right. It starts at Carbondale at 10.30. Santa comes off the train to meet the kids. Kids are smiling. It's so great. Then they're in Archibald for 11.35. He spends like 20, 30 minutes there, meets all the kids. Then he comes to Jessup at 12.20, meets the kids, goes to Oliphant, 1 p.m. Kids come there. It's great. Dixon City, 145, and then he stops in downtown Scranton where there's hundreds of people waiting for him. And that's at 3 p.m. And anybody that's out there that, and I understand some parents aren't able to afford toys, but they're collecting toys for tots, so if you have any new toys, please bring them because it'll be great to be able to help the less fortunate. Um, also, so people realize, please make sure you reach out to McDade Park, 963-6764. We're going to be having sleigh riding. It's free to the citizens of Lackawanna County. Make sure that we have ample snow there, but they went sleigh riding this past uh, snowstorm, so they were back at McDade Park, so it's a lot of fun. Um, also, the electric trolley will have a Santa on the excursion. That will be starting November 24th, 25th, December 1st, 2nd, the 8th, 9th, 15th, 16th, 22nd, and 23rd great time Santa's on the train they get to go through the big tunnel they can talk to Santa Santa gives them a little gift it's just a fabulous time it's great memories and like I said the uh, to uh, Wayne Hiller and his staff they do a great, great job. job oh my god and then also they have Elf on a Shelf and that is going to be I'm not sure of the tight on that but that's going to be coming up that's a, a one day event elf on the shelf so make sure you reach out I think it may be this weekend coming up but it's a that's going to be a nice trolley excursion um, also um, for many many years I, I've been going up to uh, the family to family basket giveaway or turkey giveaway up at the Masonic Temple better known as the um, cultural center um, and I've been doing this for years. I, at one point, I used to give out hot chocolate. Every time, we'd give iced tea out when it was warm out. And then, like, lately, like, over the last decade and a half, I go up there, we usually give out honey buns and oatmeal cookies and moon pies and all kinds of stuff. There was hundreds of people in line starting at 745 this morning waiting to walk in 
to the cultural center. It's freezing outside. Some of these people were in hoods. The kids are there. And it's just heartwarming to walk along and we just give out something to them while they're having their hot chocolate and stuff and talk to them. And I knew a lot of them. And I knew some people that just were down on their luck. Some of them were former inmates that I knew. Some were people that lived under bridges. Like, and, and some of them were asking, could I have extra? And those are the people that you could tell lived outside. You know, it just, everybody just gives a little bit back. And, and it's not just the holiday part of the year. It's the 365 days. It's, it's all year round. There is a need out there. And all of us are very fortunate. We have cars and a warm house and refrigerator and stuff like that. But there's some people that are very needy out there. But I'd like to congratulate family to family. They did a great job today. And um, the, they helped out a lot of citizens. And last but not least, I would just like to wish everyone a very happy and safe Thanksgiving. And please don't forget our servicemen and servicewomen that are overseas fighting on behalf of our freedoms. So please, don't forget everyone and I'd like to wish everyone a happy, safe Thanksgiving. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call. Yes. 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 I think I might have to...